Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's TX141 here with a special edition of the Ace in a Day gameplay series for Arcade Mode in War Thunder. Today we're bringing out my favourite plane, the F6F-3 Hellcat, and we're also, doing, uh, we're also bringing the Christmas update for my channel. Okay, so we're on the Ground Strike map, Desert Coast I believe it's called, this is patch 1.37, my first gameplay. And well, I'll get into the gameplay on that in a minute, but first the F6F Hellcat. Designed as the successor for the F4F Wildcat, it was very well known for its rugged reliability, uh, good pilot safety in terms of getting hit and making it home, along with a number of other factors. The two factors I just described to you were factors carried over from the F4F Wildcat. However, the Hellcat had an uprated R2800 Pratt & Whitney engine with 2000 horsepower. I believe it was the same engine as that in the original Corsair. As a result, the Hellcat had a much better climb rate, much better acceleration, and additionally, due to some special designs made by the Grumman, Grumman organization, sorry, bit of a mouthful there, uh, this plane was incredibly maneuverable as long as it kept its speed, as long as pilots kept the speed up. I.e., this maneuverability translated into the Hellcat being able to outperform a zero at high speed and at mid to high altitudes. The only time a Zero could outperform the Hellcat was in terms of climb rate at lower altitudes, I believe below, I think it's 10,000 or 13,000 feet, not sure, quoted it from Wikipedia. I'm not getting all my facts from Wikipedia, I have a couple of books on these planes, but I'm just giving you a brief summary. And also, if this, uh, if the Hellcat was at low speed, the Zero could outperform it. American pilots were told that if a Zero was, on the, was uh, behind them and chasing them, just to roll over and dive away. The Zero couldn't perform the same manoeuvre and maintain the, an equal dive speed with the Hellcat, meaning that the Hellcat enjoyed much success during the uh, war in the Pacific and made a number of American fighter aces within the United States Naval Air Force. In game, in War Thunder, patch 1.35 saw the Hellcat being a very good plane with high speed, so long as you kept your speed between 300, 300 to 400 km an hour. Had a very good turn rate, however once the speed of the plane fell below that, oh, you lost all the manoeuvrability. Despite manning the uh, 650 caliber machine guns, which are incredibly effective at gun convergence. In patch 1.37, I haven't noticed many changes, although it seems the acceleration of the uh, plane has been upped significantly. It was rather sluggish in 1.35 and meant that once you drop your speed below 200 km an hour, it's incredibly difficult to get your speed back. Now, I decided to dive after this P400, I believe it's the premium version of a Kitty Hawk in the British line because I noticed it's going for our P-47D Thunderbolt and I managed to kill the pilot of that P-400 before it gets anywhere near our Thunderbolt. Now you have to give, forgive me folks for the rather stat, uh, stuttery frame rate in this video. I have a, the uh, new patch has caused a couple of frame rate optimization problems for uh, the DX3 recorder I use. And additionally you'll notice that the ping is very inconsistent, however I think that's more server related along the lines than anything else since the uh, new patch has just been dropped and the servers are being updated. I turn around and notice there's an A20G Havoc just above and I, decide, I proceed to take them out by once again killing the pilot, or co and co-pilot if there was one. Uh, I also notice there's Junkers 87 about to dive on me. Now rather than go head to head with Junkers 87 I decide to roll over and go into a mini dive but I notice they're actually chasing my teammate in a kitty hawk so I engage WEP and make my way up to the Junkers 87D. Now what you're going to see here is that I pretty much push my plane to the limit and just put it on the edge of a stall before I get the Junkers 87. Having achieved a critical hit on the Junkers 87 and being at stalling speed, I decide to break off because I know that Junkers 87 has taken severe damage to its uh, tail control and therefore is out of action. Within reason, even if it makes it back to the airfield, it's going to be out of action for at least 5 minutes. So I go into a dive now, knowing that there's a number of enemy planes well above me in terms of Spitfire Mark, I believe there's a Spitfire Mark 5B, and I decide to go after this bow fighter instead. As you're about to see, the maneuverability of the Hellcat is very well maintained at high speeds, and we're doing 770 km an hour at the moment, and I'm keeping right behind this Bowfighter Mark 10. Of course, I did screw up my initial burst, however, because of the speed and also I'm adjusting, that's expected. However, with a bit more experience and training, I should be able to get the first burst off a lot better. Staying behind the Bowfighter, I'm noticing that they are doing a couple of quite tight maneuvers. 
trying to chase after our Yunkers A turn, but I get them in this flat turn. I damage their elevator, and I set the plane on fire, which puts them into the ground, making this my third kill. With regards to the Christmas Channel update, folks, I'd just like to say, firstly, as I roll over to get to go after this Spitfire, I'd just like to say, firstly, I'm very appreciative of all the support that's been given to my channel, now at 77 subscribers. I do this purely on a fun basis, I don't do this for any money, I'm not intending to monetize at any point, although if I do, and by the way, just we're going on, we're doing a, fat, a vertical factory with that Spitfire Mark IIa. The Spitfire Mark II is gaining on me just simply because I'm running out of maneuverability as my speed drops. So I decide to dive away and fly away from the Spitfire Mark II, which has a much weaker power plant and poorer acceleration compared to the Hellcat down at lower altitudes. I'm getting away from the Spitfire, and because I managed to get away, I decide to turn around in a minute and attack that Spitfire and get the kill. Despite our P400 going after the Spitfire, and I was quite worried at this point, thinking, why has this P400 not killed the Spitfire? Because I didn't want to kill still. However, as you'll see in the bottom right corner, no critical damage was reported, so I proceed to finish the job, killing the pilot of that plane. Carrying on with what I was saying with the Christmas update, now I'm very grateful for all the support, the likes, the comments, everything, the feedback I've been getting, and it's time for me to respond to some of the uh, feedback I've had. With regards to video quality, unfortunately I have attempted to record in a slightly higher quality than what you see at the moment. I uh, tried up in DX3's codec quality from low to medium, However, the frame rate was very inconsistent. I did intend to bring you an 11 for 0 Hellcat gameplay as my final gameplay from patch 1.35. However, the frame rate was absolutely terrible. It was bouncing all over the place and well, I was a bit disappointed because it was it was an it was a memorable, memorable game. It didn't show off the Hellcat quite as well as I think this game does, but it was still quite a nice game to finish off the previous patch. Additionally, if I, as I said, if I ever do decide to monetize vid the, my videos and make a bit of money, although I've heard there's a lot of problems with YouTube at the moment, but that's nothing that I'm really cared about. I'm just here to bring enjoyable content for fun, etc., etc., etc. As I've said, um, if I do decide to, the money will probably most likely be pocket money, and it would only go towards sort of buying a couple of new components for my computer and just upgrading the video quality. I engaged this A20 TG Havoc and I'm quite shocked at how quickly I managed to kill their pilot. I just thought I'd intercept them seeing as they were making their way around the map, taking out our ground targets. I'm getting a couple of few sneaky shots there just because I want to be that fighter ace who took out the A20G at a very close distance and get oil all over my screen. Yes, I sometimes get in those moods, but um, no. Anyway, uh, what I've forgotten to tell you about is the setup of the plane. I've got it fully upgraded, i.e. the Hellcat. I'm using a 300 meter gun convergence, which is rather ironic because most of the kills I've made so far have been made at distances well over 300 meters, which, oddly enough, uh, would, meet, would make my uh, gunfire rather ineffective. Although we did nail that bow fighter well in our convergence. I'm using a 30 minute fuel load, and I'm using omnipurpose ammun ammunition for the 650 caliber machine guns. The thing that I love about this plane is that it's a plane in which, when used effectively, can bring down any opponent. Now I must admit, before recording this game, I did decide to go into a uh, game with the Hellcat as my top plane. I was rather disappointed and quite annoyed at the fact that that game put me in a matchup where I was entirely against Catalinas, H6Ks and very low rank aircraft. I mean, I was going up against Hawks. And speaking of Hawks, I'm going to swoop in like an eagle and take out the Spitfire Mark IIb. I do some critical damage, although they decide to go into a sort of mini loop using the rudder and what's left of the wing control. So I decide just to pull up on the stick, roll over, and that way make the Spitfire think I'm trying to chase after him. I've flown off, and I catch the Spitfire in a tight turn. Again, using my lovely 50 cal ammunition, I've managed to kill the pilots. So that's my sixth kill. Now, what you're going to see with that SU2, that no, sorry, this SU2 that I'm about to engage is how I'm trying to remain very restrained and not not try and steal a kill off the LA-5 that's just decided to dive down on that enemy SU-2. But as this goes on, I'm getting closer and closer to the SU-2 and I'm thinking to myself, come on LA-5, you've got two 20mm cannons, do your job. And it's quite hilarious what happens as a result. So the LA-5 has made one pass, he's, he or she's now making their second pass and has completely missed, and I'm thinking, well this is unsatisfactory and I'm going to dive down and take the SU-2 out. I open fire and watch what the LA-5 does. Crashed into the back of the SU-2, I managed to set only the SU-2 on fire, funnily enough, and that gives me my 7th kill. Now, I don't like to kill still, folks, but in that situation where a plane is literally being gi being given mercy, that there's no need and it needs to be taken out accordingly, especially seeing as that SU-2 can take out a number of ground targets very quickly. 
Now my final kill of the day is after this Junkers 87 and I show here how tightly this plane loops over. So I know the Junkers 87 is very manoeuvrable at low speed compared to my Hellcat, so as I loop over I pretty much get right in behind the Junkers 87 and take them out for my 8th kill. Now with all the kills of the game out of the way, at this point I'm just flying around building up a bit of altitude because I've been at low altitude for a significant portion of the match, which is where this plane does lose out a little bit in comparison to its like for like fighters, i.e. the Spitfire Mark II's and Mark V's, the, Zero, the Japanese Zero and the Messerschmitt 109 uh, ML, although the ML does perform much better up high. Uh, but as I was saying with regards to the channel update, my intention is to put a video up every week. I'm not working to a timetable, so there might be weeks where I put up more than one video, there might be weeks where I don't put up any videos at all. But the thing is, if I start timetabling my channel, then it becomes less enjoyable for myself. You guys will probably get bored with the monotony of me constantly uploading every Monday, etc. It, it just ruined the fun for me, and I think it ruined the fun for you guys and girls. Uh, I've already responded to the feedback regarding the graphics. The other feedback is, will I be doing things with subscribers? Well, I'm happy to squad up with any of uh, you viewers anytime you want. you just got to drop me a message in game or on the forum and I'll do my best to. I don't play very often and I've been incredibly busy with work recently and making sure everything I need is ready for Christmas, so that's why I haven't put any videos up. Because one point, uh, patch 1.37 has been dropped very recently as well, I'm not going to be putting any more videos up now until the new year, probably the second week of January, just because I want to have a break, I need a couple of weeks off just to clear my head, and also I want to rank up some planes because some subscribers have asked for certain planes to be done in the Ace of Day category, including the Focke Wolf 190F8, which I'm thoroughly looking forward to. I'm heading towards the enemy furball here, and I'm getting ready to dive down on one of the enemy fighters, but the game ends, and we're about to bring up the scoreboard. But now I'll bring a video every week and I'll just keep with the format I'm doing at the moment because you guys and girls seem to like it, I'm enjoying it, why not, it's a perfect combination. So looking at the new crazy and contracted scoreboard, I'm noticing that I managed to get 26,000 silver lines and just, uh, just shy of 1,500 research points. I'm working towards a P51D5 on the American line just because I really do want that Mustang, although it's probably going to cost me an arm and a leg. I won't use real life money. I I won't be using golden eagles. We managed to get eight kills in that game, which is quite exceptional for the Hellcat, seeing as the amount of abuse it gets from a lot of the uh, player base. However, I think it's a thoroughly good plane when employed to its strengths, i.e. Like keeping its speed up and also adapting to each given situation, picking on planes and abusing their weaknesses, such as Spitfires, their low speed with landing flaps, and etc. etc. You can see that we're at the top of the last scoreboard for the team, although we could subtract one kill for that SU2 kill. Anyway, I've been TX1 for one. Have a Merry Christmas, ladies and gentlemen, and I look forward to seeing you in the new year. Until then, take care and have fun in the skies.